at the right end scale, uh, uh, right end, right hand end of that tumor progression model. Take, for example, uh, a, a data from the National Cancer Database in the United States. 53,000 patients, you can't challenge the statistical validity of, of this database. 53,000 patients treated across the country, all 52 states. And for papillary carcinoma, 35% had undergone lobectomy, and another 35% had undergone total or near total thyroidectomy. And same thing for follicular carcinoma, 41% lobectomy, 51% total or near total thyroidectomy. At the end of five years, and I admit five years is a very short follow-up frame for differentiated thyroid cancer. But also keep in mind that patients who recur from thyroid cancer, majority will have recurred within the first five years. At five years, for both papillary and follicular carcinoma, stage one and stage two, that is up to four centimeter tumors, the uh, survivorship is 100% regardless of the initial operation they had. And this is a database of over 50,000 patients. The conclusion of that particular paper uh, published by Hundal was that at five years, for neither papillary nor follicular carcinoma, no particular surgical procedure uh, generated superior survival for any TNM stage of patients or any TNM subsets of patients. Obviously, longer follow-up is necessary. And I will share with you longer follow-up on other databases. So as I mentioned earlier, we got to rely on these parameters to make our treatment decisions. These parameters have been shown in numerous uh, data sets that these are reproducible, independent parameters of prognosis on multivariate analysis. And I share with you few of the published uh, series. Mayo Clinic earlier report in 1987, correct me if I'm wrong, in years, Sir uh, Kerry, uh, their subsequent report uh, in, uh, I believe, in the mid-90s, Lay Clinic, Karolinska, and our own group. The reproducible independent parameters of prognosis are the same. Age, 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 and age. Tumor size, extrathyroid extension, uh, histology. These are parameters of prognosis which have been repeatedly shown to be of importance on multivariate analysis. How do we capitalize upon these in selecting our treatment? And I share with you data of my own institution. This is 20 year follow-up. So now we are not talking five years, we're looking at 20 years. Consecutive uh, series of patients, over a thousand patients. Uh, patients younger than 45 had a, a significantly longer uh, and, and better survivorship at 20 years, 96% compared to 70% in the older patients. Clearly, a widespread between the young and the old. And there is nothing magic about 45, it's a continuum. 44 is not good and 46 is not bad, but it's a continuum, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and so on and so forth. Females, as it should be, they carry a slightly better advantage in life than men, and that occurs in all walks of life, and thyroid cancer is no exception. Michael is laughing there. Uh, histology, well-differentiated tumors do better than less well-differentiated tumors. We uh, know that intuitively that should be the right thing. And tumor size, less than four centimeters, uh, T1 and T2 have a 91% 20-year survivorship compared to larger tumors with only 57% 20-year uh, survivorship. In contrast, multifocality of the tumor I mentioned earlier has no impact on prognosis. In fact, multifocal tumors did somewhat better than uni unifocal lesions. So we look further into it. It sounds sort of counterintuitive. Patients who have multifocal tumors are usually young patients. So multifocality of differentiated carcinoma is a phenomenon of papillary carcinoma of the young. You seldom see multifocal papillary carcinoma in a 70, 80 year old male. In contrast, extrathyroid extension has significant impact on prognosis. Uh, so much so that those patients who manifest extrathyroid extension at initial presentation 
have only a 34% 20 year survivorship compared to those whose primary tumors are intrathyroidal. So this is serious business. And not only they have an impact on life, the biologically extrathyroid extension is a phenomenon which has a high risk of local recurrence, high risk of regional metastasis, and high risk of distant metastasis. So on all three criteria, extrathyroid extension is something that should demand your attention and interest with serious intent to embarking upon appropriate aggressive surgical intervention. Nodal metastasis, like multicentric microscopic foci in the thyroid gland, have little impact on prognosis. And again, like the multifocal primary tumors, those with nodal metastasis at initial presentation seem to do slightly better than those whose neck was negative. Looks like a, a counterintuitive observation. Looking further into this group of patients, majority of the patients who present to you at initial treatment with palpable neck metastasis are young patients. And therefore, you find that their age supervenes in dominating the prognosis rather than the extent of nodal disease. In fact, in the older patients, uh, nodal metastasis does have a negative impact on prognosis. Patients over the age of 45 have only a 80% 30-year survivorship compared to 100%. You can't make it better than that. 100% 30-year survivorship on those young patients who come with palpable neck metastasis. Imagine the importance of your intervention. Yes, they, they do need treatment, but they don't lose life to thyroid carcinoma. Distant metastasis, on the other hand, will have obviously negative impact on prognosis. Alert me, Mr. Chairman, if I'm going over time. Uh, so now, if we use these parameters, we can risk stratify our patients into the, those with good cancers who require appropriate but relatively conservative treatment and those who require aggressive treatment. The low risk group are patients who are younger, females with small tumors, less than four centimeters, T1 and T2, whose primary tumors are intraglandular, well differentiated histology, and who do not have distant metastasis. These are curable thyroid cancers. In contrast, the high risk group patients are older patients, males, larger tumors than four centimeters in diameter, with extra thyroid extension, poorly differentiated histology, or those who come to you with distant metastasis. If you look at three groups of uh, uh, reports here, Memorial, Mayo Clinic, and Lay Clinic, the death rate in the low risk group from thyroid cancer is under 2%, 2% in the Mayo Clinic series, 1.8% in Lay Clinic, 1% in Memorial Group. These patients do not die from thyroid cancer. In contrast, the high risk group of patients, mortality is two cancer, thyroid cancer is 43, 46, 46%. And therefore, if you look at a here, 20 year survivorship in our own group, low risk patients, 99% 20 year survivorship, cost specific, compared to only 57% in the high-risk group of patients. Not only the mortality is high, but the patterns of treatment failure is also different based on their risk group stratification. If the patient is into the low-risk group, the treatment failure occurs at the primary site or in the lymph nodes, both of which are still curable. That's why they don't die. On the other hand, high-risk group patients, their treatment failure occurs mostly by distant metastasis, which you can't cure, and that's why they lose their life. And also at primary uh, site and in the, in, the lat in the lateral neck. But the commonest site of failure in the high-risk group patients is distant metastasis. So now we can have a rational approach to selection of initial surgical treatment. You want to be aggressive at extremes of age. We know in children there is a high risk of pulmonary metastasis, occult pulmonary metastasis, and therefore you do want to do total thyroidectomy because radioiodine therapy is effective and curative in the pediatric age group. Children with papillary carcinoma do not die, but they have distant metastasis 
and they, are, they still have curable cancer. In con uh, on contrast, older patients uh, who have large tumors should have appropriate but aggressive surgery followed by either radioactive iodine or even external radiation therapy if indicated. But majority of the adults in the 20 to 50 age group, if their primary tumor is a low risk tumor, meaning unifocal intraglandular tumor, lobectomy is curative, they do not need any further treatment. Keep in mind, I said unifocal intraglandular tumor. Their contralateral thyroid lobe has to be normal to palpation or normal to ultrasound. We did a, a prospective randomized trial would, have been, would be great. And we've been talking about in the morning of level one data. Well, we, we will never get level one data for papillary carcinoma. Because if we embark upon a trial like that, we'll need a 30 year follow up and none of us sitting here will be alive to report the data. But short of a randomized trial, we did a match per analysis of patients undergoing lobectomy and total thyroidectomy, the blue and the green lines. At 20 year, disease-free survivorship was comparable. Not only survivorship was comparable, but the patterns of treatment failure by local, regional, and distant metastasis, exactly same whether they had undergone lobectomy or total thyroidectomy. So we do recommend total thyroidectomy, but under select circumstances, patients who have diffuse bilobar disease. If there are bilateral nodules in the thyroid gland, regardless of the size of the primary tumor, because the contralateral nodules will continue to pose a problem. Patients who present to you with major extrathyroid extension, where there are massive bilateral lymph nodes. Patients who present to you with distant metastasis, or where there is history of exposure to ionizing radiation, where the risk of development of a second primary cancer in the opposite lobe is high. So under these circumstances, we would recommend a total thyroidectomy. I mentioned earlier to you that extra thyroid extension is serious business. But serious business is twofold. Here is extra thyroid extension of the minor nature, which majority of the patients have, little breach of a capsule, fixation of the sternothyroid muscle to the thyroid lobe, or soft tissue extension in the perithyroid soft tissue. And uh, you have major extrathyroid extension with invasion of the central compartment viscera. We saw this slide earlier, that may, those who present with extrathyroid extension have a high risk of local failure, regional failure, and distant metastasis. Not only that, their survivorship is poor compared to those whose tumors are intrathyroidal. These are all patients with extrathyroid extension, the uh, 30 year survivorship is only 30% compared to those whose tumors were intrathyroidal over 90% curability. But if you excise all tumor and get gross clearance in the young patient, young patients with extrathyroid extension, but with complete clearance of disease, you cure them. So here is the role for aggressive surgery. This is where we need to be spending time not in the low risk one centimeter papillary carcinoma and squabble about its treatment. Young patients with extrathyroid extension, you need aggressive surgery. And extrathyroid extension may take place by invasion of the larynx, the recurrent laryngeal nerve, trachea, esophagus, or even the carotid artery. The principles are that you want to remove all gross disease, preserve functioning structures where possible, preserve vital structures, maintaining a balance, between tumor control and best functional results, and then use adjuvant treatment when feasible. Take, for example, recurrent laryngeal nerve. You can have invasion at the cricothyroid membrane by the primary tumor or by a cluster of paratracheal lymph nodes along the tracheoesophageal groove. Case in point shown here. Can we dim the lights, please? Dim the lights. Uh, and here is the recurrent nerve invasion right at the cricothyroid membrane and the contralateral nerve being normal, this nerve would have been deliberately sacrificed to get or achieve a curative resection. Invasion of trachea is a complex problem and you need to carefully endoscopically evaluate the tumor before you embark upon making a decision to operate or not. If you can run the video, 